Hi there, this is Carrie from Stamp with CT. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Texas, and I am so glad that you are stopping in to see my project for today. This is a really fun way to use color, to use our inks, applying it with a sponge brayer and then also our sponges to make this really pretty background. Um, then we're going to use dies from the Animal Friends die set and just use the negative image then once we cut those out. Put it on a piece of early espresso card base. Super, super easy, but a very pretty card. Now, I did put a piece of Whisper White inside of my card. I did not stamp a sentiment on it, but you could use this for so many occasions and then just stamp you know whatever you would like to use it for when it's time to use it so I'll show you how I did this card we are going to be using our sponge brayer and this is a really neat tool and I think it's a great value too you get two of the handles and four of the sponges for eight dollars you can actually rinse out these sponges and reuse them I tend to do like I do with my sponges and sponge daubers I just set that aside and just continue to use that for that color so the first thing we're going to do is use our pineapple punch ink and we're going to do that all over this piece of Whisper White. Now this is one of our new style ink pads that came out about June. Opens just like a compact. I've used this one a good bit, so when you first get them, they're a little bit stiff to push in, but if you just keep using them and working with them, it'll loosen up. When you use a sponge brayer or any kind of brayer, you want to apply the ink to that sponge going in the same direction so that you do not get lines and then same thing when you're putting it on the cardstock you just go in one direction you want to put a pretty good layer this pineapple punch is a fairly light yellow but it's very pretty I'm just going to turn it over and do that other side other end actually and then apply my color. That's all we're going to use that for. Let me set this over here. Get it out of the way. Now I did use a one and a quarter inch punch, circle punch, and I stamped on, punched on a post-it note very close to the edge so I've got a little bit of sticky. And I'm just going to place it on my background, kind of over towards the side. That's how we're going to get that moon, because we've already applied the yellow, the um, pineapple punch, and by putting that mask as we add the other colors, it will stay the light yellow. So the next thing that we're going to use is Mango Melody. And this one also is one of the newer styles of ink pad. And it's given me a problem. You open it just like a compact. This one I've not used as much, so it's a little bit harder to push back, but it will loosen up a little bit as I use it. So I'm just gonna ink that up. And then this color, I'm only going to add to about three quarters of the cardstock. So I want that light, almost like um, the moonlight is shining on our kangaroo. You want to use a circular motion to add the ink, and it's really to the point that you like it, what looks good for you. Our sponges do come in uh, a round, and I take a large craft scissors and cut them up. I have seen people that will take a piece of cardstock and just staple it to the end, almost like a little handle, and then they'll also know what color it is. But I just do it like that. And again, you can rinse those out if you want to, but I just tend to put them aside and then reuse them. Now this is an older style ink pad pumpkin pie 
I decided that when we came out with the new style ink pads, I would keep, and I'm only going on about half of the paper with the pumpkin pie. Anyway, I decided that I would keep my old style ink pads. A lot of my customers have that style and there's nothing wrong with them. They're still perfectly fine. I always encourage people to purchase the refill, the re-inker. And so as long as you do that when you have your ink pad, it's still good. So we're using the old style and the new style in class. We've not had any problems with that. And then our last one that we're going to be using is Cajun Craze, and it's pretty dark. I'm just going to be using it towards the top, about that top quarter of that piece of cardstock. I think that this is where it really gets pretty. There's just something about that dark and then the moon shining through. So you get the idea. That's what I have when I get all done. It's pretty light towards the bottom. What's fun, like when we did this in stamp class, everyone has a different hand when they're applying the ink. And so everybody has a different card. Even though it's the same images, it just looks different because of the way that they did that. And that I think is really cool. So the next thing that I did was take my kangaroo and place her because we're just going to be using the negative image. And then also you can go ahead and remove your mask. Isn't that neat? And we've got this leaf and you can just kind of put it wherever you like it. But I just kind of had it uh, just kind of peeking into the moon. So I would go to the big shot and cut that out. But I have one ready for us already that I did a little bit earlier. And I have just an early espresso card base. And I did not cut a piece of white to go on the inside of this one, but like I showed you earlier, whenever I use a dark cardstock, I'll put a piece of white or very vanilla so that you can write the message and it can be read easily. Now I did miss that right there when I ran it through. So I'm just going to snip that. So I didn't have it quite to the edge, but that's okay. That way you get her little feet when it's close to the edge like that. And I like that look. So we'll just glue this down. I think that you could use Stampin' Dimensionals if you wanted to, just using some Tombow. During stamp class, we did have a couple people that took their kangaroo and actually put it on the inside of their card. I thought that was a super good idea. Just trying to get that lined up at this angle. Isn't that great? One of my customers and friends had lived in Australia for a while and she really loved this. I think it brought back some memories. So I hope that you have enjoyed this project. This is number four in a series using the Animal Expedition suite of products from the annual catalog from Stampin' Up! So if you missed any of those other videos, you can go back. I have them all in a playlist for Animal Expedition and I hope that you've enjoyed this. I may be adding some more because I do love this suite of products. The paper is beautiful. The stamps are really cute. So check back. If you are not yet a subscriber, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button. And if this has been helpful and you've learned something, if you would like this video, I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.